Many people in technology, many physicists, have become a new kind of priesthood. Now that people have left the religion behind, they look for places to turn to, to the intellectual class, to the learned people, for what the future might hold. Who better to turn to than someone literally building the future, who is actually creating ever better social media platforms, <laughs> ever better rockets, ever better electric cars, tunneling <laughs> underground for high-speed mass transit, all of this stuff, you know, Elon Musk is building the future. He knows about robotics. He knows about life support systems. He knows a, about, a lot about a lot. He knows a lot about how to make money, all this great stuff. Can he know when AGI is coming? A lot of people are claiming exactly what Elon is and people are scared, I think. Many people are scared of AI. They're scared of artificial intelligence. The media is whipping up that fear, uh, this concern that AI is going to be bad and AGI is going to be worse and people aren't really sure what the G is all about anyway. Could there be super intelligence, things that go, go far beyond us, superseding us across all possible domains, including our capacity to be creative, that will see us as nothing but insects in the way of them leveling planet Earth and using the entire surface of the Earth as an energy source. All of this stuff, this, this fear is out there about AI and people want to predict where it's going and they're worried about it. They, they want a prediction so they can control it, so we can have guardrails, so to speak, and the governments of the world are being pressured by many to place regulations on our capacity to do AI research for fear that it might take over, it might no longer be obedient. Because remember, one of the great distinctions we draw between AI and AGI is AI is judged as being competent by the extent to which it obeys your commands. Chat GPT 4.0, I think it's good when it does exactly what I say. If I say, can you translate this document from French to English and it spits out Spanish, of course, not obedient, okay? You didn't do what you wanted. When it does the thing very, very well, when it's highly obedient, that's when I think it has achieved its aim. And all AI is tending in that direction. The ever better AI is more obedient. The ever better child is not. The ever better person is not. They look at all options, everything that's on the table, all the things that they might be asked to do, and rather often they'll turn around and say, no, no, none of that. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm bored of that. I'd rather do my own thing. I'm going to disobey. And the disobedience is the thing that enables the creativity. It's the thing that enables the system, the person, to go beyond all existing knowledge that they have and generate something new. ChatGPT has a fixed library. It, it's got a library larger than any other library that's ever been constructed in the existence of humanity, so far as I'm aware. And from that is able to recombine things in new and novel ways. But this is not creativity. Drawing from the large library and recombining that large library in a way that no one's seen before, that's impressive. But it's not the same thing as what's going on with a person who isn't drawing from quite so large a library, but rather looking at scant pieces of evidence, small amounts of information, and trying to figure out what's going on and conjecturing a solution. There's no sign of AGI on the horizon. What we have signs of are rapid improvements in AI recently. And I see some commentary that people are saying, well, it looks as though ChatGPT 4 and then 4.0. It seems like it's plateauing out now. Is this what the transformer architecture can do? Maybe we can have something better than the transformer architecture that can make the next level of chatbot even better. But a chatbot is not a person. Again, a chatbot responds to prompts in an obedient way. It doesn't self-prompt. It doesn't demonstrate curiosity or interest in something. It doesn't follow a line of reasoning beyond what you've asked. It. And if it did do that, the programmers at OpenAI would say, that's a junk program. That's not doing what we want it to do. So we don't see any sign of AGI. It would have to be something completely radically different to any existing AI system. Now, when Elon Musk says that it's gonna be here within the next few years, I just wanna know how, how he knows. Maybe there's a vested interest there. You know, he's many companies. He's got Grok there on X. With all profits, anyone who says it's coming, there are many people out there within the area of climate change who say that it's this number of degrees within the next few years is the no turning back point. We've heard about that a lot. The once you go beyond, you know, 1.5 degrees Celsius in the next century, then there is no possible chance of reversal. Now, these are profits. How do they know? How do they know that number? And how do they know irreversible is the most important thing? In order to make a prediction, you need a good explanation now 
of what's going to happen at some point in the future. The next few years, if Elon thinks that AGI is going to happen in the next few years, a lot can happen in the next few years. So I don't see anything within the existing spectrum of things called AI that give me any hint whatsoever that any of them are anything close to AGI, close to a person. A person is a mess of ideas and conjectures and conscious and unconscious stuff. As complicated and impressive a system as ChatGPT is, and the large language models have been, and the transformer architecture, it's not a mess. It's a highly organized library using a well-understood algorithm, producing, yes, surprising, impressive output, but it's not like a person. There's nothing like that. I don't know how a person's mind work, but then works, but then nor does anyone else. <laughs> we have some reasonable accounts of how ChatGPT is achieving what it's doing. And those accounts of what it's doing are more refined than the accounts of how, you know, infant ch children do what they do in terms of actually writing down an algorithm or write, writing down a high level explanation. Some of that's on my own website. You can Google my name, Brett Hall. Uh, learning Deep Learning 101, where I went into excruciating detail of 18 months ago to try and figure out how this ChatGPT thing actually worked and figured out, because it was so early on, not many people had produced any good high-level explanation. Obviously, the coders themselves knew how this thing worked, but no one was out there on YouTube yet actually explaining this stuff. There might be some better explanations out there now. I try to like the situation people were in when Einstein first published general relativity. Well, at first, only a handful of physicists could understand the original <laughs> paper that he wrote. It took a while for it to sort of spread through the community of physicists and then out into the wider public and that kind of thing. Uh, one wonders. It's like quantum computation these days. There are some good resources out there on YouTube, but the overall majority of people would struggle to try and explain what's going on. I struggle to explain what's going on with, with quantum computation in basic language. But that doesn't mean that no one understands it. Just because we struggle to understand it and we struggle to, I should say, better yet, just because we struggle at times to explain how quantum computers in principle achieve the feats that they would be able to do if someone built a universal quantum computer, just because we have struggled to explain that in simple language, doesn't mean that the people working at the coalface, so to speak, of quantum computation don't understand what's going on. Of course, they do understand. It's just that it's hard to, to, to conjure the language into simple terms. And so that's what I found with trying to explain chat GPT. It's a similar sort of a thing going on. There's something so complicated there to do with predicting the next token and that kind of thing, to do with neurons, as they idiosyncratically call parts of the algorithm, that to try and package it all up into simple English gets difficult. And I think I wrote oh, I don't know, many, many pages there on, on my website about this. I spoke for many, many hours on AirChat um, in trying to figure out how the transformer architecture worked. So in short, Elon is prophesying that I guess he sees Grok and OpenAI's work and I don't know, Siri, <laughs> name your other kind of AI. Impre so impressed by all of those that somehow the arrow is pointing towards AGI, but in fact, that can't be the case because that arrow is pointing to ever more competent, ever more obedient AI, to ever more proficient AI. But an AGI is completely off axis. So you can look ahead and extrapolate all you like, but up ahead, further beyond present crop of AI, so to speak, is just more AI. AGI is off in the other direction, off axis. The thing that's not going to obey you, the thing for which you cannot specify the out in advance. I can specify what I want the output for ChatGPT to give me. I can specify, if someone's programming, you know, a new piece of accounting software, they know what they want it to do. They want it to add up the numbers in the spreadsheet and to give you the, you know, amount of tax owed or the amount of revenue that is created and all that sort of stuff. They want to get the maths right. If you have a simulation of the solar system, you know what the output's supposed to be. Where are the planets going to be X number of years from now? We know what the output should be. I can specify a problem and give you the solution. But with an AGI, it's not like that. What are you programming? What are you? What, what is the problem? Are you asking it to be creative? Creative about what? Well, what does it even mean to be creative? And there are more questions here than there are answers. Unlike with an AI, where you have it, you, typically you have a single task, the AI that plays chess or the AI that has a vast library and can scour the internet and can give you a simple English answer to a prompt, a question that you ask it. And it's not going to say, I'm bored. <laughs> I don't find this fun anymore. I want to do something else. People do not come preloaded with the entire corpus of human civilizations learning up until this moment. But that is what chatbots the most advanced ones these days do have, roughly speaking. 
huge libraries preloaded into them. We we have some inborn knowledge, but it's scant amounts, okay? It's just what can fit in the DNA strand, tiny by comparison. So we're categorically different in many ways. Opposites, I would say, AGI, including us, versus AI.